Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is Chance Ball, Chapter 83, and this one is titled Family Time. We would never ask you to leave, you said to her, picking her up into the bed and snuggling her close. Mm. Darby hummed as he rolled over and placed an arm over yours and hers. One of my girls talking about so early in the morning. We're talking about how you love us and we don't need to go anywhere, you said softly, stroking Comey's forehead as she looked up at you with her big grey eyes. Yeah, damn straight. Darby rasped. Yeah, damn straight. Comey repeated emphatically. You huffed out through your nostrils with amusement and your fingers played with the new wedding rings as you smiled to yourself. My life is perfect. That day you were all so in love. You couldn't stop smiling and looking at your rings and Darby couldn't keep his hands off you. It was a warm, lazy afternoon and after putting Comey down for a nap, you both fell into bed, fast asleep, with zero clothes on. It was around 3pm that afternoon that a little hand touching your nipple piercing woke you up and you popped an eye open to see Koemi standing there with a finger on the shiny bar. Um, you right? You asked her in a raspy voice. What's this, mummy? It's a piercing, you said groggily. Um, what's this? She pointed to your tattoo of Darby's name. That's how she knows she's mine. Darby offered as he rolled over discreetly covering his lower half with the sheets. When you got married, you also got this one? Comey asked in awe. How has she not seen this before? You wondered. Then you realised that if she ever did see you with no top on, you were standing up, so it may have been covered by your boob. Um, no, I had this before, you said to her. Will I get one when a boy loves me? She asked innocently. Um, you're going to stay with mummy and daddy forever. So no boy is going to come and take you away because Daddy doesn't like other boys. Darby said sternly. Daddy, you chuckled. You can't say that. I can. I'm the daddy. And I say my girl will remain pure and untouched forever. Don't listen to daddy, you said to her, lifting her up into the bed. You need to marry a nice boy that's not like daddy, okay? Hey, daddy's amazing, okay? Darby said defensively. Daddy was after Mummy's V-card in high school and took it in the equipment shed at school, you said to her, but meaning for it to be aimed at Darby to rile him up. Give it back to Mummy, Daddy, Koemi suddenly said with a very cross look on her face. It's not nice to take things from others. I can't give it back, Darby replied in defence. I don't want to give it back anyway. That's not nice, Daddy, Koemi said again in a very disappointed voice. Yeah, Daddy, that's not nice, you sided with her. What is this, going up on Daddy? Darby asked you as you chuckled away beside him. You need to give it back right now or I'll never be your friend ever again, Koemi said sternly. Baby, I... Yeah, Daddy, you said to him with one eyebrow raised and a cheeky smirk on your face. I'm being picked on. This is bullying, he rebutted, making you laugh. Promise you'll give it back, Koemi said loudly. Okay, okay, I'll give it back, he said, looking across at you. Come here, mummy. I'll give you a kiss to give it back. Okay, he replied with a grin, leaning over for his lips to meet yours. Did he give it back to you, mummy? Koemi asked you, her big grey eyes staring into yours intently. Yeah, he gave it back, he said to her. Thank you for helping me get it back. Good daddy, she said, leaning forwards to pat him on the head. I actually feel so special, he said. Thank you. It's okay, she replied with a genuine smile, and you patted her on the head. The rest of your holiday was lovely and relaxing, and after it had come to an end, you came back to the grind, picking up pretty much where you'd left off, and within two days back at work and practice, it didn't feel like you'd even had a holiday. I need a holiday, you moaned to Darby. We got back from a holiday on Monday, he replied. I know, but I'm tired already, you groaned, flopping down onto the table. Mummy, Comey asked, walking into the room with a jar full of walnuts in her hand. Can you open this frickin' thing? You nearly died. Koemi Azura Todoroki, we don't say that word. What word? She asked. Walnuts, Darby said to her. No, not walnuts, you chided. We don't say fricking, fruck, or any of those words. But why? She asked. Because it's a bad word. But Daddy and Uncle Hunter say it all the time, she said, looking at Darby with a look of accusation. Yes, you shot at Darby, but it's not good to say it. 
Is daddy bad? She asked. No, no, you can say it when you're a grown-up, but not when you're three. But I have my birthday. She replied. Yes, I know, and you're three now, but that's not an adult. When will I be an adult? She asked. When you're 18, you said. And then can I say freaking? Well, yeah, I guess, you replied, looking at Darby for support, but he just had a smug look on his face. Well, personally, he said, I think it's okay if she swears. But I'll teach her to swear, swear responsibly. responsibly, you added, saying it at the same time as him, when you remembered him saying it to you before. Okay, I'll leave it with you, you said back to him. Go do your thing. Okay, come with me, baby, Darby said, taking Missy Kay into the lounge so he could chat to her about swearing. Let me teach you the rules of swearing, Darby said as he sat her down on the lounge and then sat beside her. Okay, first of all, we can't swear at people. We can only swear at things. Okay. Komi nodded, but Darby wasn't quite sure that she really understood. Okay, and you have a limit of three swear words a day. Okay. She nodded again, but again, Darby didn't feel like she actually understood. Okay, good. Now, what swear words do you know? Darby asked. Um, fists, um, big, um, walls, um, mummy, daddy, and... Okay, those aren't swear words. Darby said, I mean, frick, shiz, bitch, you know. Yes, she nodded with a blank expression on her face. Darby sighed and face palmed. Okay, I'll tell you if you can use it or not. He said, I'll tell you when you've used your limit of swearing. Okay, Daddy, and I need to go to potty. Um, sure, off you go. He said, gesturing towards where the bathroom was. So, how did the swearing talk go? You asked smugly as he walked into the room and she tottled out. Yeah, she understood. Clear as mud. He sighed. Well, you can take the reins on this one, you said airily, turning and walking out once Komi had called out for you to come wipe her ass. Darby sat there for a bit and thought, but he had a resolve, and that was to teach Ko how to swear properly from a young age, and that would stop her from being an ass and swearing at anyone when she got older. I'll ask Hunter to give me a hit. He thought, he'll help me teach her. That next afternoon, Darby took Koemi to practice, and she bounded up to Fuji with a giant grin on her face. Daddy says I can swear now and I can say bad people words like adults. What? Fuji asked as he looked from her to Darby, who had just entered behind her. Yeah, I need your help, man. Darby said with a hand greeting to Fuji. I want to teach you how to swear properly from a young age. Oh, hell yeah, Fuji said with an approving head nod. Frick! Komi exclaimed. She says it so clearly, Fuji laughed. Yeah, can't say umbrella but can say frick. Darby said with an amused look on his face. Is sunflower a bad word? Koemi asked, tilting her head back up to look at him. It should be, Darby said with a smirk. Anyway, let's get training, yeah? Heck yeah! Koemi exclaimed. They probably shouldn't have, but both Darby and Fuegi both burst out laughing and high-fived her, making her smile brightly and making them happy. Friggin' queen stuff right there, Ko. Fuegi said as he carried her over to the nets to start some practice. Heck yeah! Komi said again with a grin. And for the rest of the day, that was her only phrase, and understandably it got a good chuckle out of most of the guys to see this pint-sized girl encouraging them with enthusiastic swearing. After a big afternoon of swearing, Ko was quiet on the way home, just processing everything. Daddy? She asked from the back seat. Yeah, baby. Darby asked, looking at her in the rear view mirror. What does shish mean? It means it's not very good or terrible. Tebiru? Koemi asked. Yeah, Darby replied. Okay, because Coach is a shit teacher, she said honestly. Darby nearly swerved off the road as he tried not to crack a smile. Now, we don't say swear words about people or at people, so what would be a nicer way to say it? He asked, looking back at her in the mirror. He's bad at teaching, she said honestly. Darby had to bite his top lip and pull it down into his mouth to stop from laughing. Why is he bad at teaching, baby? Darby then asked, trying to keep a straight face but failing a little. Koemi then went on to explain everything that he had been doing wrong, describing it in great detail, then finished by throwing her hands up over her head and groaning with annoyance. I can do the teaching better on him, she said, looking out the window with the most vexed look on her face. Well, next time I'll invite you to teach us, okay? 
Darby said, looking back in his mirror again. By the time he looked at the road again, he was at an intersection and the lights were amber. He didn't know how long they had been amber before, so he sped up to try and clear the intersection in time, but unfortunately the lights turned red as he crossed the line and sailed right through the red light, easily the only person in the crossroads and standing out like a sore thumb. Ugh, frick, he grunted, looking around to make sure that he was all good. And that's when he eyeballed the officer in the car waiting at the lights adjacent to him. Darby's face fell as they crossed paths, and when he looked back and saw the officer's lights on, that's when his stomach flipped and fell into his shoe. Whoops, we'll see what happens in the next chapter, chapter 84 tomorrow. See you then.